Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Talk. I'm Bordo. I have a pleasure to work on a reel today. This one was uh, found by Scott at a flea market in uh, Southern California. This is a pen 160 on the box. So, well, it says it costs $9, and I think it was purchased, well, it's hard to say, 1987 possibly, but I don't think so. I think it's a lot earlier than that. Um, I'm going to guess even into the 50s, maybe. You'd have to go back and take a look at the actual boxes that uh, that they came in. This is before those blue boxes with the rings and that. I think this is a much earlier version of that. A $9 reel. It's uh, star drag, 3 to 1 ratio, and made in Philadelphia. That's the information on the box. This is uh, often referred to as a Baymaster. Uh, it shares pretty much everything with the uh, Beachmaster, which is the 155, and the more popular of those reels, they would come out, uh, they were wider, and then they have a couple of uh, variations on it, one of them being the Pen 180. Well, just because uh, a lot of folks surf, uh, search uh, YouTube by the model that they have and don't realize that the servicing on a 155 generally applies to this reel, well, just because of that and because it's a beautiful reel. I thought I would take a moment and do the servicing on this one. Here's another indication of the age of this reel. That torpedo handle is a lot smaller than the later versions. The later versions became a little bit wider, and uh, longer and wider. And then, uh, well, they went over to a rubber handle. And by 1987, it was certainly, a, I believe, a rubber handle. So this one, I'm going to say, is in the 1950s. A telltale sign of that will be what we see when we open this up. If it has a flat spring, has the anti-reverse dog spring, then we're going to know that reel was made before 1957. So a little bit of reason to stick around, find out uh, what that is. And uh, the other indication on the age of the reel is the side plate. This has an etched side plate with a lighthouse and bird scene in it. And uh, those etch plates are typical of what you would have found in the, uh, the 1950s. Well, let's get started. While I get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the Art of Fishing Reel Service and Repair. If you'd like to learn a little bit more, maybe you have a reel and uh, you're, you're thinking about servicing it. And what I try to do in this channel is teach you how to do it yourself. Of course, I've tried to provide some information on the manufacturers, the type of reel, the usage, and things like that as I continue to work on the reel, but uh, there's a lot of uh, kind of incidental conversations that I have along the way, and if you like learning a little bit more about fishing reel manufacture in the industry, I try to provide that to you as well. Uh, always stamped on the, these reels is a lot of the part numbers, and the part numbers usually tell you a lot about the, the reel itself. So 24 is going to be the key number for most pen handles. In this case, it says 160 on it. And uh, that one kind of unique. All right, we've removed the set screw, the handle screw, the handle, and now we're going to remove the star adjuster. When I remove the pieces and parts, I like to put them into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container, or at least I have been recently. That'll change. Uh, but um, as I go along, I do like to try and do that. One of the things I expect to see in here is we're probably going to need drag washers in this, but it looks new. We'll find out. The, uh, if this is the assembly I'm thinking about, it probably has the old leather drag washers in there. They may be brittle and cracked and ineffective. One of Penn's early attempts at waterproofing was to cut a groove underneath some of their star adjusters. Some of them will have a flat surface on both sides like this. Some like this one and uh, some of the ones from uh, that era, maybe a, a pen squitter and the like, will have that groove. That groove is going to sit over the shoulder of this um, side plate here, and it's going to lock water out from coming in that way. So just kind of an aside. That uh, star adjuster goes in there. Normally I would take that uh, spacer out, but, well, it's hiding under that collar because of that side plate uh, design. So we'll just go ahead and remove the side plate. There are six screws to the side plate. When you go to remove these, I like to put them under my table so that I can make sure that all of those are the same size. Now, on this reel, I happen to know that this is going to be two shorter screws, or there should be two shorter screws, depending on if the reel was ever serviced before. 
Uh, sometimes when it gets serviced, screws are, wind up in the wrong place. But the two screws that go onto the bottom reel seat are shorter than the two here. Uh, if you try, if you've lost one of these screws, you're out of luck now. Uh, those shorter screws are no longer available. So you would have to uh, get a longer screw and let that protrude out the back side. Okay, those are the four screws. You can see two of them are shorter. And what I will do in my parts tray, I'm going to take the four and put them in one corner. And then separate the two shorter ones. Just so that I don't make a mistake later. Let's remove the side plate then. And this one, uh, again, everything looks new about this reel. I'm not sure it's ever had a line on it. That's the way a reel should look coming from the factory. It has uh, almost zero oils and greases left in this one. I would suspect that's because they've evaporated over time. We'll remove the spool. Same thing on the side. There's no evidence that uh, any of this stuff is, has ever been uh, used. I don't see any greases in here. I do see a little bit of dirt. Something probably just wept in off of the side. While I have that off, I want to take a kitchen scrubby and a rod and reel cleaner. I did notice there was some debris on the metal parts, so I'm just going to put a little bit of that onto the uh, kitchen scrubby and just clean it up a little bit. The rod and reel cleaner is, is twofold. It's a cleaner and it's also a uh, kind of a polish, so it uh, looks that nice. And I'm noticing that's pitting, so uh, what I thought was going to be an easy cleanup is, well, it's pitted. So I don't know where this reel was stored, but it has uh, had an effect on losing some of that chrome finish there. That goes into the category of, oh well, and uh, there's nothing you can do with pitted chrome. You, you uh, If it was on a line guide or something, you might want to brush that off. One of these, you might want to use an, an abrasive like a uh, steel wool or something get the edges, that's because the, the line could get cut with the pitting. In this case, we're just going to put a little bit of grease on there and set that assembly off to the side. Well, this is going to answer the question, is it pre-1957 or not with the next series that we do. There's four screws that hold the bridge on. When you take these screws off, lay them on your desk as well. You will notice that the screws are different. Top screws have a partial thread on them. If I can hold them. There's only a partial thread. The rest of it is actually going through a spring, which you'll see in a moment. You want to make sure that you put them back there. The screws below are going to be the more traditional fully threaded screws. If you put them up top, you risk one of the coils on the spring catching that uh, thread on the screw and kind of making it miserable. But there's that fully threaded screw. Both of those belong on the bottom. And one of those is holding the anti-reverse dog. So what I like to do, keep pressure on the inside of this. Kind of act as if the screws were still there until you remove all those screws. Those go into my parts tray. There's one more here I can't get out, but that's okay. It'll come out. Oh, there you go. That's partially threaded. With that done then, I cut my hand, and now I'll pull up. That way the spring and the anti-reverse dog are kind of going to land in my hand as opposed to bouncing around somewhere. So let's remove the, the case. And this one was made before 1957 because this is the flat spring for the anti-reverse dog that I was referring to. Again, the inside of this reel appears as though it's never been used. Scott, you found a beauty. We're going to take the pinion gear off and we're going to remove the yoke and jack assembly, the top piece which is uh, controlling the free spool. It's driven by the lever over here. That's called the jack. Underneath that is what's called the yoke and well doesn't it look like a, an oxen's yoke, right? Then we have two springs, they're the yoke springs, that are in those cavities there. For a moment, I'm just going to put those springs into my parts tray. Now, you would normally clean this up. Again, I don't think this reel has, has gone fishing. We're going to take the fishing reel grease and just a little bit into the cup, the gear side bearing there, and a little bit onto the eccentric, which is going to drive that. You can see how that will move the 
the yoke up and down, or the jack up and down, pushing the yoke in and out. All right, we can rebuild this then. We'll take the two springs. One goes in each cavity, one on each side. And we're going to check the yoke, uh, check the yoke, check the spool gear or the pinion gear. Make sure that there's no dirt or, or debris in those teeth. Make sure that the teeth are not bent or chipped or cracked. Let's go ahead and do that. And then a little bit of grease onto the shoulder of the yoke. On both sides. Then we can insert the gear and the yoke by finding the slot in it. And note that when you go to install this, the slot on the pinion gear is going to be facing you. So we'll center those two holes in the yoke over those springs, collapse the springs, and then bring the jack in over the top so that it snaps in place and the stud in the case is in the groove of that jack. That's how you set that side. I'm going to remove the anti-reverse dog. This is another part that's no longer available, so make sure that you hold that. This part, of course, says uh, 15, 155, and the 155, as I mentioned, it's the Beachmaster, but it's the same side plate, same gearing and the like. Actually, you'll see stamped here on the bridge is 155 as well. So the only difference between this reel and the 155 is the width of the frame, not the gearing itself. I'm going to try and poke this pin through. This pin holds the gear sleeve. There we go. I'm going to use an awl to poke that through. And once that comes through, you can remove the gear sleeve. This is the pin that was holding it in place. And that makes it easier to clean up the bridge. And again, this reel probably hasn't been used or it's been used lightly. One of the things that you want to do is make sure that the dried greases and the like have been cleaned up and uh, that you replace them with fresh grease. Just a light coating of grease onto that shaft. Go ahead and put that sleeve back on. There's a felt piece down here. You can put some oil on that felt piece. That's where the back end of the gear sleeve is going to go. And then we can reinsert that pin into the hole. Just like that. When you do this, make sure that it is all the way down. This one's not down. I'm just going to take a dead blow hammer and just it a little bit. If you don't do that, you're not going to get the main gear over this. Let's pay our attention now to the main gear. I don't, again, I don't think these have ever been used. I'm just a little bit concerned that possibly, just maybe, the, uh, the, the drag washers may have dried out. This is a hard washer. That's in fine condition. Then what we want to do is push through the main gear stack. And we're in luck. So these are okay. These are uh, permeable, means they will absorb some grease. So you can put some grease on there. I'm going to keep this real original. If you wanted to, to take it fishing, you, well, you probably would want to uh, do an upgrade to the HT100 disc uh, dry washers. This one, I'm going to leave these original. There's three washers, there's three metals, and there's a cap washer. Two of the metals are called keyed washers. They're rectangular in the center. One of them is called an eared washer. It's got the circular center. We'll show you how that works in a moment. Do the same thing here. Now, this has a little bit of dried grease in it. So I'm going to use a brush. I'm going to pull through with a hard bristle brush to clean out the dirt that's in that track.
want to inspect the teeth, make sure that they're all good, they are, and then put some fishing reel grease, just like we did on the pinion gear, put it onto the main gear as well. They don't have to get it in every tooth, it will spread because the diameter on the pinion gear is different than the diameter on the main, but uh, make sure that you do get a good amount of grease in there. First of the keyed washers, the one with the rectangle center goes on top of that first drag washer that you lubricated and put in. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to use my glove as a uh, tool to spread the grease. The middle washer's got the two points on it, and there are two indentations, grooves, in that main gear. Generally speaking, you can see it a little bit better when it's installed, but you'll see that there are two grooves in that washer has got to fit in those grooves. If it does not fit in those grooves, you're not going to have a drag. Last of the key washers, cap washer, and then the spacer. So all of that is done now. All that's left to do, I'm going to take my glove off for this, all that's left to do is install that anti-reverse dog. And the glove comes off because, well, I just need a little flexibility with that flat washer. To install the, uh, the anti-reverse dog, you want to find a fully threaded screw. Place that in the bottom corner opposite the post for the uh, anti-reverse dog. Go ahead and push down on the assembly. Bring your main gear assembly in and then rotate so that the bridge is actually holding that um, yoke assembly down your anti-reverse dog and it sits like this Then you need to take your flat spring one side about half of it goes on top of the dog then it gets twisted over and nested against the side plate might be a little hard to see so let's see if we can do a close-up on this part of it is laying flat here goes behind the stud and then it goes to the side plate. Once you do that you can rotate the bridge the rest of the way. You want to center the pinion gear so that it uh, lies flush and then take a turn or two on the screw that you have in there just to get it started. Don't finish it off. There needs to be a little bit of play in that side plate before you uh, get them all tightened down. Take one that's a partially threaded screw that goes up now. So that's down, up, up, down. Then rotate your bridge here so that you can see the screw aligning with the hole in the bridge before you go ahead and, and try tightening it. Again, just a partial turn just to feel it grab. And then come over and do the same thing on the other side. and then come down to the bottom to finish the force bridge screws. Okay, once you feel that you've got them all, reverse it in an X pattern, tighten them all down. And then if you like, turn it, make sure everything's turning fine, which it is. The only thing I did not grease here that I'd like to grease is I'd like to put a little bit of grease onto that jack because it's going to slide on the inner side of the bridge here. You need a little bit of lubrication for that. We have put grease onto the spool shaft. When I install these, I generally like to install them with the free spool uh, engaged. It reads off on the side. It means the cranking is off. Get the four big screws. Set them to one side. Take the two small screws. Separate them. What I want to do now is just line up the top cross post. The screw, all I noticed that side plate shifted a little bit there. So I'm just going to line the side plate back up. And we'll put the first one in.
Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one, maybe you're stuck along the way, uh, just leave them in the comment section. I do try to answer those questions. Again, I completely understand. I'm trying to, to show you how to do it yourself, and I understand from time to time that things go oops. And, uh, well, if they go oops and you just can't figure out where you were, maybe you weren't taking pictures or something, maybe you're a little bit stuck on something, just leave that question in there. I will try to answer that for you. And most of the time I can help. Sometimes I, I just, I can't. I just don't know the answer, or maybe the question isn't clear or whatever, but, or maybe it's a problem I haven't seen before, but most of the time I can get you back on your path if uh, that's your problem doesn't and again doesn't have to be regarding this reel any any reel all right so all of these are in this is the last one that needs to be tightened and then I'll just circle around one more time just to make sure that they've all been tight and we're getting close to the end of the service now there you go all right next step then is the star adjuster Two sides, again, this one's kind of easy to identify because it's got the hollowed portion below. That's going to face in. If you have a reel where both sides are flat, look for the side that has the rounded corners on it that faces out. Also on the pen reels, just like we were, were noting before on the part numbers, there will be a part number on the back end that part number faces in. Okay, you can use the handle as a wrench to hold. Uh, uh, gear sleeve while you tighten down on the star adjuster, but make sure you tighten down on that before you install the handle. If you don't do that, you're going to trap the star adjuster and uh, well, you won't be able to move it to uh, tighten your drag. Learned that one from experience. All right, same thing. Start your handle screw by hand and then use the wrench to align the scallop and the handle screw with the tie down nut and if you didn't uh, take that sleeve off you could use an oiler right now come on through that oil port just where it says oil and uh, put a squirt of oil in there that you can also do that for uh, intra maintenance maybe you're just feeling that your handle uh, your turning is bogging down a little bit you could uh, put a drop of oil in there as well all right let's tighten down the whole fast screw That'll keep that handle screw from loosening. And uh, let's give it a try. So we're in off position. Let's spin it. It spins nicely. Now it's we've got grease. We put new grease here, new grease on the other side, grease on the shaft. So it will spin a little bit tight. The way to tell if it's properly adjusted is to do this. Just move it in and out. If you hear a little bit of a knock, that's exactly what you want. You don't want it over tightened. And you don't want it loose where you hear it slamming back and forth. You want just a little bit of play in there. That's the proper adjustment for that. So that's all set. Let's put it in gear. Let's turn it. Well, we knew it was turning beautifully before, and now it's turning uh, with, e with ease. That's it. That's your pen 160. And uh, Scott really did have a very nice flea market find with that. We've dated it prior to 1957. And uh, wow, this one, uh, I like to say they all should have a second chance to go fishing. And I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't cry if somebody uh, put this on a pole and took a fishing. Uh, but some of these, uh, well, they, um, they need to be displayed as well to show you the engineering of the time. This one is flawed, as we mentioned. There is some uh, pitting on the uh, reel seat. Other than that, it's a beautiful example of a reel that sold for $9 somewhere back in the 1950s. And $9, as many of you that uh, were around at that time, $9 in the 1950s was a pretty expensive reel. Well, that's it. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do. Thanks to our police, fire, rescue, uh, putting your lives on the line for us, dedicating your career to the tasks at hand of keeping the public safe. To everyone, enjoy the art of reel repair. If you have one of these reels, now you know how to tune it up. If you're considering buying one, you just saw it's a very nice and well-engineered reel. And, uh, well, I hope you've learned something today. 
This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.